In this lecture, we're looking at a number of different things related to systems. In our, uh, in this unit, we have looked at a number of different topics. We've talked about controllability, different tests and conditions for controllability, canonical forms, observability, minimality, and the Kalman decomposition. We're going to look now at balanced realizations, and, and then also we're going to look at multivariable poles and zeros. And then we're going to move on to talk about observers a little bit. Balanced realization. So what is a balanced realization? Well, it is a particular uh, state space form that can be used to, to uh, it has some certain benefits. And so let's talk about what it means. Balanced realization. So given a stable minimal state model. So notice it has to be stable. So that's a limitation on this, but it's, it's not too bad of a limitation x dot is equal to ax plus bu, y is equal to cx plus du. We can, from the system, compute the controllability and observability gramians. So p is the observability gramian, q is the controllability gramian, and we can, from these two, compute these gramians. And here I'm doing this in continuous time. Uh, all of this holds for discrete time as well. This, this whole process. Of course, you would have to use the discrete time Gramians, but it's basically a, the, otherwise the same. So if we were to perform a similarity transformation using some transformation matrix T with non-zero determinant, then we could get the system A bar, B bar, C bar, and D, where A bar is TAT inverse, B bar is TB, C bar is CT inverse. So if we do a similarity transformation, and if then in this case we would get if we looked at the Gramian for this system so a bar transpose p bar p bar a bar plus c bar transpose c bar so if you write that in terms of the original matrices so if we substitute this for a bar this for b bar this for c bar actually b bar doesn't appear in this equation but c bar does then we get all this stuff um, if then we now multiply on the left by the inverse of this, which is T transposed, and on the right by the inverse of this, which is T, we get this equation. And so if you look at this quantity here, this quantity here is the same as this quantity. Uh, that should say transpose. P is equal to T transpose P. Mm. Right. So this would be the original, uh, the Lyapunov equation in the, um, the Gramian in the original coordinates with A and C. And so if you call this P, P is equal to, again, that's, you should say T transpose P bar T. Okay, so... So there is a relationship between when you transform from one set of coordinates to another set of coordinates, that the Gramians also transform in this, in this way. Similarly, for the controllability Gramian, uh, we would get that Q is equal to T inverse Q bar T inverse transposed, or that Q bar is equal to T Q T transposed. Okay, and so there are again relationships between the, the the Gramians and and in the original coordinates and the Gramians in the um, yeah so in the original coordinates and in the uh, so notice here I started with the original and I plugged in this for A. So you can do it either way. You can start with one Gramian. Here I started with the original Gramian and I ended up with a Gramian in the new coordinates. The other time I started with a Gramian in the new coordinates and ended up with something in the original coordinates. So you, you, you can do it either way. So the, the important thing here is to recognize that the new uh, Gramians uh, can be expressed in terms of uh, the old Gramians uh, or the uh, 
the original Gramians uh, by these relationships. Okay, so we have that. So, so now what we want to do is we want to find a T that will do something special here and here. Okay, so something special. So since the Q is positive definite and P is positive definite, the product PQ itself, it's not, it's not uh, in general, will not be symmetric. So you can't say it's positive definite because it needs to be symmetric. However, the eigenvalues of this product can be shown to be only positive, real and positive. So even though this matrix, uh, it's not symmetric, it will have only real and positive eigenvalues. And you can, you can actually prove that. It's not too difficult to prove. And so we can talk about something called the Hankel singular values. We talked previously about the Hankel norm. Uh, but the Hankel singular values um, are the square root of the eigenvalues of the product PQ. And we saw that the Hankel norm was in fact the largest of the singular values, the Hankel singular values, or uh, the, the largest, uh, this should actually say the square, the square root of the spectral radius of the product the square root of the spectral radius of the product. So this then is the the Hankel norm and these are the Hankel singular values. So now what we're going to attempt to do is something called simultaneous diagonalization. Wow, that's a mouthful. Simultaneous diagonalization. So we first start with Q and we take what's called the positive definite square root of Q Q is positive definite, and you know that if you have a, a, a scalar, a positive scalar, you take the square root. In general, when you take the square root, you get plus and minuses. So you get the similar kind of thing happening when you take the square root of a matrix. So if you looked, for example, at the taking the square root of a, um, so Q to the power 1 half, where uh, Q, if you look at the, um, uh, singular values of Q. Q itself, since it is positive definite, is special in that it has uh, eigenvalues or eigenvectors that are orthonormal. That is, you can get a uh, an orthogonal matrix uh, as the eigenvector matrix, and then the, the the diagonals will be the diagonal of Q will be all positive numbers. If you were to take the square root of that diagonal matrix, again, you would have plus and minus, plus and minuses when you take the square root of each of the diagonal elements. If you only take the plus diagonal elements and then multiply again on the right and the left by the unit, the orthogonal matrix, the, uh, then you can get the cube, the uh, square root. And so R is the, the square root of, of Q. And we can always get a positive definite square root. So now that we've got this R, we're going to compute the singular value of the product R P R. So this is actually a symmetric quantity. And so we can get, again, orthogonal and orthogonal matrix U that diagonalizes this. So this product can be written this way, where this matrix in the middle is, is a um, diagonal matrix of positive values so we can we can write it as the square of some values and so we're going to define these as the, the diagonal elements and these diagonal elements then appear squared in this in this uh, decomposition okay so once we have that we would compute the square root of s so so here you have s squared. We're going to actually take the square root of s. So that's actually the fourth root of this quantity. Uh, so again, s is a diagonal matrix. You can take the square root of that diagonal matrix. And so here we don't ne necessarily require a positive definite square root, although we could get a positive definite square root. So in other words, it doesn't matter what the signs are necessarily. Um, 
Then we define the transformation matrix given by this. Wow. Similar transformations given by this. So what is the purpose of all this? It sounds like a lot of work to go through, just, well, that's the simultaneous diagonalization. Um, so this transformation matrix will work to get, so no, notice that here, the transformation matrix appears as an inverse. Here, the transformation matrix appears directly. And so that same T can diagonalize both of these two matrices, Q and P, at the same time. And so when we go through and do all of this, we find that in the new coordinates, the new P is equal to the new Q and it's equal to S. And that's significant because it is real, diagonal, and, and so diagonal and identical. These two guys are identical. So you can think then of the balanced realization as setting up the uh, controllability and observability gramians to be equal and diagonal. And what that does is it kind of, so what can happen in a, in a realization is you can have more emphasis put on the input or more emphasis put on the output. And so what a balanced realization does is it balances the amount of uh, energy you can think of between the input and the output. So you can think of it that way. So again, why would we do this? First of all, there are good numerical properties associated with this. So this process, um, in this process, we, we are working only with positive definite matrices and with um, orthogonal matrices. So this is an orthogonal matrix. This is positive definite. We can take this to be positive definite too. So. So because of that, we have good numerical properties. In particular, uh, it makes some control-aided, com uh, wait, computer-aided control system design software. Com computer-aided control system design software. It can make it more effective in terms of doing things like computing transfer functions, uh, computing eigenvalues, computing uh, a lot of a lot of things. Um, another thing that can happen is if you find that, that when you do this diagonalization you may have so even though this S is diagonal and all of these are positive numbers it could be that these these uh, if you if you were to order these if you were to sort them in order of, uh, of size um, so that this one is greater than sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2 is greater than sigma n um, greater than or equal could be equal could all be equal then that simplifies things um, so that the diagonal matrix uh, then uh, in the in the smaller elements these elements could be quite small for example the first few may be pretty large and the ones after that may be really small, and so the um, if you if you were to truncate this the um, the S, you would get a P, and you can actually use that to do uh, model order reduction. So you can actually use the similarity transformation that is produced from that to give you what's called balance truncation. So it allows you to reduce the order of a system. So that's another reason for using a balanced realization. And so this can be very helpful, especially like if you design a controller and the controller that you design is a very high order. That means it's going to require a significant amount of computational effort to be able to implement that. Then we can get by um, using balance truncation can reduce the order of that controller, for example. The approach that we've talked about can also be modified for use with an unstable system. Um, we won't get into that, but but uh, it basically requires modifying your, your Gramian so that 
so that you can stabilize the system first with, without actually having to use feedback or anything like that. So anyway, that's the balanced realization. Thank you.